This is Contemporary Art Studios and today we are at the other art fair at the Truman Brewery in Brick Lane in London. Hello, today we're with Oliver Havik. Is that, am I saying that right? Yeah. I was just having a great conversation with Oliver and he was telling me about his works and I've seen him at quite a few of these art fairs going forward. And I just wanted to know how he comes across and what these art fairs do for him. Um, and obviously now we're with him today, we can catch all the answers. So, how many art fairs have you took part in? Um, I've done quite a few of these ones. And uh, the main goal here is the, uh, just basically interaction with yeah. like, other artists, potential collectors, and uh, just for personal growth. You know, it's nice okay. to come, come back and see how the band is. But do you see the... Does this help you? Do you think this is a good benefit towards other artists that want to take part in art fairs and yeah, no, take part in the Holy Art Fairs as an emerging? Do you think that you can really build your collector base yeah. in this type of way as an independent artist? I think so. I think, yeah, especially if you don't have a gallery representation of art for that before you, I think it's very, very good. And is this the only art fair that you showcase in? Well, the regular in the UK, one? Yes. Oh, and, and you do a lot of abroad? Well, not a lot, but yes, yeah, some, but they are. They are Germany. Uh, okay. No, and you see these specific pieces that you have on show. When was they created? Sorry. When was they created? Uh, they were all done uh, this year, beginning of this year. Okay. No, amazing. No, thank you for. Do you have anything to say to upcoming viewers, just as just where come you are? Just see us and interact with the artists. No worries. Appreciate your time. Thank Cheers. you. Clifton Fine Arts, yeah. out of Bristol. Yeah. Okay, amazing. So, and you are the, well, the art dealer? I'm the art dealer, absolutely. How long have you been doing this thing? Uh, I've been doing this first art fair I ever did. I was 18. I'm 25 now, seven years ago. Okay. Uh, I grew up at these art fairs. My granddad was an artist. Are you an artist? Uh, Everyone's an artist in the art. family, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> some art, but uh, yeah, sure. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I've grown up around this stuff, so... So, how is it coming down to London? Is it a different art scene compared to Bristol? I feel like this part of London has a lot of similarities to Bristol. Yeah. Like with the style, kind of the culture, and it's just... It's cool, like it's a cool, like it's, it's cool parts of Bristol and it's, it's cool parts of London, and I guess... Uh, oh yeah, I feel very comfortable yeah. around here because it's so familiar. Okay. I don't know. That's why he does painting yeah. here. That's why he does painting in Bristol, there's a lot of street art. Yeah, so is it predominantly, you, you wouldn't consider this street art, would you? It's, it's a bit more contemporary. I guess it is street art, because you're looking at street art, but he's painted it. It's, it's, uh, it's almost an appreciation of the yes. street art. It's an yes. appreciation of other people's arts. And, and, and we've had, in the gallery, we've had street artists like Rowdy walk past and see one of his... Yeah. Paintings on one of my dad's paintings has come in. He said, "What is going on?" Yeah, that's amazing. They collaborated and yeah. So the street art, oh, love it. Obviously, that's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Someone, if, if someone's willing to paint your paint, paintings, then you, can, you must be a as good well painter. as well to the, to the detail that he's doing it, and the fashion that he's doing it in is very almost photographic. That's why I had to come close. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you've been doing this for seven years now. Would you say? Like, what would you say your challenges are? Obviously, the art world is, is, is a very specific niche and it's very hard to start it and once you're in it, it's very hard to keep it going. Yeah. So, for you, what would you say the most important thing is to overcome as an art dealer and obviously putting yourself in the perspective as your father, as an artist as well? As an artist, I always start. I've got a lot of friends that do art and they want to make a living of it. Of, of, of making their art. Mm. And I always say they need a thing, they need a theme, mm -hmm. they need something uh, recognisable so you, you'd be able to recognise one of their pieces of art from, from another piece just because they have, they're not the same, mm -hmm. completely different colours, maybe a different pitch, different things, but they've got that style and you need to stick to that. Yeah. Like, really stick to that. And, and as a dealer, is it easier to market someone that sticks to that product? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's collectible, it's, uh, it's recognisable. Yeah, and then, and then the next year when someone sees your art again, mm. they have that memory imprinted and it, it just kind of clicks and they love it even more. And then maybe the third year they, they, they can't help but buy it. Yeah. They love it so much. Uh, it's about yeah. having that kind of no, flexibility. Thank you.
I appreciate the time. I see your store's getting a bit busy. I'll leave you to it. Is there a possible I can give, get? Jeez. Mr. G's. Nice to meet you. This is Contemporary Art Studios. Um, obviously, I stopped by your work and I, I wanted to ask some specific questions because it's, it seems like you're trying to say something very specific. It's like a story and it's different. It's different paths, but you see all these different paths in one area. Okay. It, am, I, am I getting close? Yeah, yeah it might be, yeah. So, um, and so, some of the pieces, like, for me, it's, some of it is nostalgic, like yeah. just the, like the, the people doing the wheelie on the bike, like coming, coming, growing up from where I come from, yeah. I, I see, I, I see that. Yeah. Um, and so, but you've outlined, let's say, 10 pieces here that are all kind of nostalgic scenes, nostalgic people and specific scenes. Yeah. And I just wanted to know your, your take on your yeah, artwork, yeah. your inspiration behind yeah, these, can, these pieces. Can, yeah, for sure. So it's, a, it's part of a project called, a series called London Street Chronicles. Yeah. So I'm basically documenting London. So I go everywhere in London and, you know, I take photos in the street. And um, the concept for the first volume, so I did a book, I published a book last year, here. Okay. And the first volume uh, was London Street Chronicles Volume 1, mm -hmm. In a Child Playground. And In a Child Playground is me going in the street and connecting with my inner child. So basically, you have to try to remove all the layers of adulthood, you know, all mm -hmm. the responsibilities and all that. Go to the core, back to your inner child, mm -hmm. and try to, to look at the world with awe, like, mm -hmm. with wonder. And mm. try to see things that we don't see. And, and is this what you're trying to depict in these specific paintings? Yeah. What you saw as a child? It's not uh, as a child. It's to just connect with your inner child so that you can basically see amazing thing in the everyday and the mundane. So when you see, for example, the kids doing the willy, yeah. you know, I'm just I, I find it amazing that they're doing the willy without you know their hands. But yeah. also I'm playing with the composition where you see one wheel inside another one, right? So this is playful, right? So there's a lot of yes, playing like yes. that, doing a lot of juxtaposition. Yes. And then also, obviously, there's a lot of contrast. So if you look at the picture right here, which is called Common Ground, it's in Acne, yeah. in uh, Stamford Hill, and you have like a Jew yeah. next to a Muslim. And that's contrasting, right? And if you think about what's going on in the world right yes. now, you know, it's my way to, you know, I'm being play yeah. playful and I'm seeing things and I'm just trying to capture it. That, that, that's, to be honest, I, that caught me late. And I feel like that's very powerful. Is, is this your first art fair? First time, yeah. I've done a few exhibitions, group exhibitions, the book. But it's my first art fair, yeah. And, and how long have you been in practice now? Oh, I've been in photography for 10 years now. 10 years, amazing. Thank you. And is, is, is this an art fair that you would want to continue taking part in? Is art fairs you... How do you feel being at your first so, art fair? Yeah, so yesterday was the first day, this is the second day. Yeah. Yesterday was good, but yeah. good feedback. Yeah. So let's see how it goes. No. Sunday night is going to be the end, so I'm going to decide if I come back or not. Are you based in London? Yeah, yeah, I live in Stratford. Okay. So, okay, no, amazing, man. Well, it's been, been lovely to kind of check in and see what your artwork's about. It's been a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Well, um, hi, how you doing? This is the Contemporary Art Studios. I just wanted to introduce yourself. Um, Na how do I pronounce it? Nala Hazel. And I've come across your artwork. As I was saying, it stopped me in my tracks. And I just wanted to know a bit more about you and your practice and how you found yourself here today. Uh, as a, this fair yes. It's my first time. It's your first time here? Okay. Because I've always been the gallery, because I've never been fairly. Okay. Yeah. So you usually have people talking for you. Yeah. 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 But now it's my thing. Yeah. And 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 how is it obviously being in galleries and now you're essentially in art fairs? Is it a nice change? Is it is it um for like different artists? other emerging artists, you can also give them advice. Is it like scary? Is it something that you'll do again? Yeah. I mean, students, I, my students came here, they didn't know I'm here. Are you a teacher? I do teach as well. Okay, where do you see? I, I, I did workshop in West London. In, in where, sorry? West London Free School, I did workshop. Okay. So, last <laughs> Oh my god, we know this here. Oh my god, we didn't expect you to be here. 
<laughs> no, that's amazing. I guess it's a good like. Yeah, it's good to be proud of. Honestly, how long have you been in practice now? Well, I I uh, I did final one came to Okay. So yes, I was like a dinner. Yeah. But when I moved to London. How, how long have you been in? Have you, is it a short time? Okay, so a while now. Yeah, but yeah. I knew when I did it, I did it for my job. 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 I wanted to go back to Haiti because I did scholarship, good on, back in my country. I couldn't do anything here. Yeah. And, um, and then one day I just gave up other jobs, found a studio, rented, and I said, I hope you pay my rent now. I'm going to pay my rent when I leave my studio at the same time. Yeah. But you know what? As, as much as I put effort into painting non-stop, mm. seeking the answers to questions in my head, what is it? Yeah. Why? I, I ended up doing workshops, joining the local artists' yeah. commissions, workshops, starting commissions as well. Yeah. I can see you probably yeah. do a lot of commissions. Yes, I do. So, so these specific paintings are these of your own inspiration. It's my own. It's so called repelling animosity. Repelling animosity. Repelling animosity. Animos I like that. Yeah, I like it's about that. relationship. I mean, I'm coming from a woman. There's yeah. a difficult to be as a woman. It's a bit special. Mm -hmm. There's a you can't talk with the men in any kind of way. You have to be always distanced. Yeah. You have to always behave well, shy. Yeah. You know, like all these things. Yeah, yeah. I and then I walk up here. And everything's freedom. just in your face. You're freedom. the. It's myself. I can be free, right? And, and then I said, I'm going to paint people, you know, very close to each other. So I can allow them yeah. to hug each other, embrace each other. Mm. And it's the relationship that I have as arguments. Yeah, man. I did go to the so it's all my expression of my life. Yeah, come on. It's amazing, it's amazing. Again, so thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And I'm definitely going to take a business card and hope you have a great rest of the week. Thank you. <laughs> so these are your work? Just all my stuff. Okay. So how long have you been in practice? Uh, I did my master's degree in 2020 as oh, an old man. Okay, that's so amazing, I'm 60. That's, that's it. Where did you do it? Winchester School of Art. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So since then, have you showcased in a lot of art fairs? Not really. This is my second. I've Just done a second. few, few other exhibitions, but this, this is the big one for me. Oh, this is this is your consider like. You well, I need to sell stuff there. at this. Yeah. <laughs> pay, pay to do some more. But well, it seems that I see a lot of red dots. Yeah, these these are sold, but I've got somewhere. I've, I've, I've got that one, and I've got another version of that one. Do you, do, do you work? The, you make these in the studio, then? Do you have your own? Yeah, studio? yeah. I don't have what I rent. I rent a okay. screen printing studio, but I've got my own screens and everything. Okay. So yeah, to get one print, I'll I'll print quite a lot to get one that I'm happy with. Yeah. But ironically, often it's not. It's, the shit ones are the ones that I end up going with. Yeah, nothing shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's in, embracing the mistakes and yeah. making that part of your practice yeah. as well and yeah, celebrating it. But yeah, this dude is a guy called uh, Rubin Carter, yeah. AKA the Hurricane. Um, and he happened to be in the wrong part of town uh, after four white guys were shot. Okay. Yeah, uh, and because he was the only black guy, the police picked him up for murder okay. for 27 years in prison for it. Yeah. And even though one of the guys who was still alive in, on his deathbed said the guy who shot us was a white guy, they still pinned it on the guy. Oh, really? 27 years. Yeah. So, it, it, where do you get your inspirations from the stuff that you make? With this, my, my, my father passed away in 2020 oh, yeah. uh, and he used to be in advertising and he had lots of box files full of old newspaper clippings and yeah. bits and pieces. And um, in one of them was a whole load of stuff about the moon landings and NASA and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, wow, this is great. And there was just, it was just in there, an article about Reuben Carter. And he had a few photographs of him. And I went, oh my God, I've got to do something with that. 
look, I like Andy Warhol, and I know he done stuff about Muhammad Ali, and I thought, well, actually, the story about this guy is more interesting in many ways than Ali, mm. because with Ali, we know his backstory, but with this guy, we He's really don't. Yeah. yeah. So I thought it had more resonance. But it was, I did a whole, I did about six screen prints all, a couple few years ago, and I don't know if it's PC or right now, but it was all to do with Black History Month. Okay. Um, and I found out a lot of stuff about uh, the Kenyans mm. and what the British Empire was doing in Kenya, yeah. which like shocked me with concentration camps and mm. stuff like that. Um, with um, what the Americans were, were getting up to, there was um, Rodney King back in 1991, who mm. was beaten up by the American police. The police just got away with it, mm. and it was like, oh my god! And then a couple of years ago, I found this somebody taking a photograph through the bushes mm. of the police, literally ten of police officers shooting this guy, yeah. and his crime was he had a penknife. Yeah. And oh my god, what goes round comes round, you know. And history pr repeats itself. We're not learning from it. Yeah. So I did a whole stuff like that, but doesn't sell. Yeah, no, it's so, very political. It's political. Yeah. It, it frightens a lot of people. So I'm sort of, that's why I'm doing pretty stuff there. <laughs> people, I'm selling this stuff. Well, well, I have sold this and people are interested in that one, but there's that kind of balance between how, like this one's political. Doesn't look like, but this is images from the CIA archives okay. of them doing, torturing people. Okay. It's called MK Ultra, which was an illegal experimentation using LSD and other drugs. I think I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, you usually yeah. see that in films, but yeah, not yeah, really yeah. Know if you're... But it's a real thing. <laughs> and, and what they were getting up to with the rendition stuff when, with, during the, the Iraq War and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and a lot of what, you know, you think the West is all squeaky clean. No way, man. Nasty bunch of people. Uh, I, believe you, I believe you on that. Well, we just got to keep it quiet. Yeah, the dirty war, where that thing's just come out about Northern Ireland, which mm. I've, I've got to see where the British Army were torturing yeah. people and, you know, covertly yeah. killing people and stuff like that. So it's, yeah. still, it's still out there, it's still relevant, it's still yeah. going on. Definitely. So it seems that you really want to make art about the what that you want to make, though. It's that you're making. I'm well, doing to be it. fair, you're I, making art. I, I love doing art. But it looks like you want to talk. You want to tell, say a message. Yeah, of course. For your course. art. It's a balance between doing the stuff I want to do, but then doing commercial stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably at that crossroads at the yeah. moment between where do I go from here? Where did you grow up, sir? I'm a Londoner, born and bred. Where about? West London, Chiswick. Okay. Chiswick, Brentford. I'm a Brentford boy, Super Bs. <laughs> yeah. okay. Ivan Tony. Yeah. yeah. Floats like a butterfly and stings like a bee. <laughs> I think you can end it like that because you've got to be. <laughs>